Let's finish building out our cart persistence for our e-commerce site with Django and Python. Hey guys, John Alder here from Codemy.com. And in the last video, we started building out cart persistence and we set it up to where our shopping cart now gets saved to the database when a user is logged in. In this video, we want to now retrieve what's been saved in the database and load it back into the session, into the shopping cart when a user logs back in. And we should be able to finish this in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And I should mention, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeofy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you the code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so in the last video, we set it up to where our shopping cart gets saved to the database whenever a user is logged in. And we can remember this. If we head back over here and log in here and go to the user section and click on admin, we can scroll down and see there's a cart. And remember, our cart is set up as a Python dictionary. In the last video, we converted that to a string and saved it to this field right here. We also converted the quotation marks from single quotation marks into the double quotation marks you see here around the three and around the four. And that's going to be important in just a minute. Now, this is great. This is what we did in the last video. But if we log out and head back to the website and then just log into the website, we can see our cart says nothing. And if we click on it, there's nothing there. Well, that's because it's been saved to the model, but we're not then pulling it out of the model when a user logs in. And that's what we want to do in this video. So this is definitely a function of the login process. We want this to sort of fire whenever we log in, right? So let's come to our views.py file in our store directory here. And let's scroll down and find the login. There we go, login user. And this is our regular login user section. So if they have filled out the form to log in, we get their information. If everything is correct, we log them in, else we do some other stuff. So right here where we're logging in the user, let's do some shopping cart stuff, right? So, okay. First, we need to get the current user. So I'm going to call this current underscore user. And we want to set this equal to, and we need to get not just the user. We already know who the user is. It's this request up here, right? And this right here, this user, we need to get their profile. So that is going to be profile dot objects dot get and what do we want to get we want to get the profile that has a user underscore underscore id equal to the request dot user dot id and that request is of course the request that gets passed in when a user logs in right so okay we can get their profile now and that's going to be our current user now let's get their saved cart from database right so I'm going to call this saved underscore cart, and we're going to set this equal to our current underscore user, which is this thing we just defined, dot old underscore cart. Now, why old cart? If we look at our models.py file in the last video, we added this old cart field, which is where we're saving the Python dictionary that is the shopping cart. But it's not a Python dictionary. We've converted it to a string. So we're going to have to reconvert it back to a dictionary here in just a second. So in fact, let's just go ahead and do that now. Let's uh, convert database string to Python dictionary. So first we need to determine if there is a shopping cart. Do they have something saved in their cart yet? Did we save something to the database? Is there anything in saved cart, which is current user.oldcart? Well, we could just do an if statement. So let's go if saved underscore cart, and that will check to see if there's something in there. If there is, we want to convert to dictionary using JSON. Now we're going to use JSON for this because JSON will convert a string to a dictionary very easily, right? But in order to use JSON, we need to import it. So let's come up to the top here and let's just import JSON. And JSON stands for JavaScript object notation, which is kind of like a Python dictionary in JavaScript form, sort of, kind of. Anyway, let's come back down here to our login section right here we can convert this by just naming it let's create a variable called converted underscore cart and we'll just set that equal to a json dot loads and then we could just pass in whatever our saved cart 
it is. So I can just copy this and pass that in. Now that will convert that string into a Python dictionary. Remember the string uh, looks like uh, this, three dash two, and I don't know, four colon one, something like that. In a string format, it converts it back to a dictionary. So, okay, that looks good. Well, now we've got that thing. Now we just need to add the loaded dictionary, or let's say loaded cart dictionary to our session, All right? Let's get the cart. So I'm gonna call this cart, and that's gonna to equal to our cart, and we wanna pass in our request. And remember, we've done lots of stuff with the cart in this views.py file, because up here somewhere, we imported it. No, we did not, it looks like. So we need to import it. So let's come up here to the top and let's go from cart.cart. .cart. We wanna import our cart. And this is cart.cart .cart because remember we have this cart directory, that's this cart, and .cart because inside of this directory, we have this cart.py file, right? Inside of there, we have our cart class, right? So that's this guy. So from the, so from the folder cart, we want to import the file cart, cart.py technically, but you don't have to put the .py on there. And inside of there, we want to import our cart. So, okay, we've imported it now. We've also imported our JSON. So now we've got this thing. We can do stuff with it. So let's come back down here. And what do we want to do? Let's loop through the cart and add the items from the database. Remember, we've converted it from a string into a dictionary, so we can loop through our dictionary, and for each item and number in the dictionary, we can add that to the cart. So book number three, we have four of them. Book number two, we have six of them, or whatever. Right? But we need to do that using a for loop. So let's uh, space over here. So let's go four, and we're gonna do a key value. Remember, a Python dictionary is a key value pair. So remember, this is our cart. So we've got like three colon two and I don't know, four colon one or whatever. This is book number three, Intro to Python Programming, and we have two of them. This is Intro to T Kinter Programming, we have one of them. But these are key value pairs. See, there's two of them, pair, right? The first one is the key, the second one is the value. So we can loop through and grab the key and the value using for loop, just like this. So we can go for key, comma, value, in, in what? Well, let's get rid of this here. Well, in our converted cart, right? That's the thing we converted using JSON. So in converted cart. And when we loop through a dictionary in Python, you have to call the dot items function. So that will grab each item from the dictionary and then loop through and grab the key and value for each one. So this is a colon here because this is a for loop. Now, what do we want to do? We want to call cart.add, and then we want to pass the product, and that's going to equal our key, right? That key value pair. And we also want to pass the quantity, and that's going to equal our value. Now, we're calling cart.add, but I really don't want to use cart.add. Let's create a whole new function just for this, because we could probably get away with using the old cart.add function that we created a long time ago. But this is specific for the database and uh, it, it could get weird. So let's just create a new one and let's call this, I don't know, DB add. So we're gonna create this function called database add because we're adding from the database and we need to create that. So, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save that. Now let's head over to our cart.py file. It's in our cart directory. And here is our old add function, right? And you'll notice it's, it expects a product and a quantity, right? We are passing the product and the quantity, right? And then what does it do? Well, it takes that product ID and it makes it into a string because we have to put quotation marks around it. It takes the quantity. It also puts it to a string for some reason. I don't remember why we did that, but whatever. And then here it does some logic. It says, hey, if whatever this product ID, it, if it already is in the cart, we don't wanna do anything. We don't need to add it again, right? It's already there. Otherwise, if it's not there, add it to the cart, and then save the cart, right? Now, this is all the stuff we did in the last video. So what I'm gonna do is, let's just come up here and let's define db add. We also wanna pass in self, we wanna pass in product, we wanna pass in quantity, 
right? And then I'm just gonna kind of copy this whole thing, right? And paste it in. I think we can get away with that. So again, it's gonna grab the product ID and the quantity. If it already exists, it's not gonna add it again. If it doesn't exist, it's gonna add it and then save it to the session, right? Then it's gonna say, hey, are you logged in? Of course, we know they are logged in. Uh, if that's the case, it's gonna grab their thing and re-add all of this that we just added. Now, why would that be? Well, because, think about it, we might have a shopping cart saved in the database and then leave, log out, come back, don't log in, put other stuff in the shopping cart, then log in. Well, if that's the case, we've got stuff in that shopping cart. We're now re-adding that to the saved cart. So we're going to keep this section. I think that will work. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this and see if that worked. That was a lot of stuff, a lot of moving parts. So let's log out and um, let's add something. Let's add uh, five of these guys and let's add two. Well, actually we don't need to do that at all. Um, let's remove that because we've already got stuff saved in our database. So now let's just log in and see if that works. So let's go admin. If this worked, uh oh, we have a problem. What is gone wrong? Uh, oh, ID. Okay. So, uh, we should not have copied and pasted. Copy and pasting always screws up. So, all right. In our new DB function here, we're converting product ID and then it's calling product dot ID because that's what we did down here in our ad. Ah, so we can't use the old ad function. We actually do need, see, my instincts were right. <laughs> anyway, we just need to take off this dot ID. There we go. All right, go ahead and save this. Now head back over here. Let's go back and try this again. Reload admin, type in the password, boom. And there it is. Our cart has two things in it. So let's test this out. Let's remove this. now. We're going to have a problem here. There's only one thing in our cart because we just removed it. But if we log out and then log back in, boom, two things. What happened? We just deleted a thing. How come now there's two things again? Well, we need to update our delete function and maybe a couple other ones as well to deal with this new database thing, right? So uh, let's come down here to our delete function. Whenever we delete something, we need to save the new updated deleted cart to our database. And we already know how to do that. We did that in the last video. So we could just copy and paste some stuff. Hopefully it won't screw up. Uh, let's see, let's go to our add function. We did it in the last video. Here is where we deal with the logged in user stuff. So let's just copy all of this, come back down here and underneath this, paste it in. So again, we're deleting a product. We're saying, hey, grab the product ID, delete it from the cart, save the cart. Right now, if the user is logged in, then we also need to save that new cart to the database, right? And strip out our quotation marks, do all the things from the last video. If you didn't see that, check out that video. It's in the playlist. And all right. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and test it. Head back over here. Let me reload this. So here's our shopping cart. Let's get rid of this book. All right, so now we've only got one book in there. There's five copies of it, one thing in our cart. Now when we log out, all right, if we log back in, boom, cart is correct. There is one thing. All right, that works, that looks good. Same deal here with update. If we change this from five to two, this goes down to two. Again, if we log out, log back in, and go to our cart, it says five again. Because again, we have to do the same thing we just did to the delete function. That's hard to say, the delete function uh, with the update function. So, all right, let's do that. I'm just gonna grab this thing from our delete function and let's go looking around for the update. For, oh, there it is right there. So right here, before we return anything, let's just paste that in. Uh, maybe move this down. I don't wanna mess with all of this stuff, so we'll just that there. Okay. Hopefully that works. Let's go ahead and save that. Head back over here and let's give this a try. Let's change this to two copies and update. And if we leave and come back, it still says two. All right. If we log out and then log back in and then go to our cart, it still says two. So, okay. 
let's see, remove update. We've got that covered. Uh, add new things. Let's add another thing while we're logged in. Uh, let's add five of these guys. All right, now there's two, two things, one book and one book, two of them, five of them. Let's log back out, log back in, head back over here. Again, we've got the two books, two of this guy, five of this guy. All right, everything seems to be working. And we have cart persistence. So I think that's pretty much it. We did some of that very fast with a lot of copying and pasting. Uh, you know, you can check the code in the pinned comment section below if you need a copy of the code. But you should probably already have that from the last video if you've worked through that. Either way, not too tricky, really. And it all kind of starts, obviously, as you would think, with the login user function. Again, we just grab our profile, get the thing out of the profile, the shopping cart, saved cart, convert that to a Python dictionary, because remember, we saved it as a string in the, in the database. And if you missed that last video, we did that because it's really hard to save a Python dictionary in a database. It just, I don't know why, it's, it's just a hassle. You can do it, but you have to import different libraries and there's lots of code involved. So to get around all that, we just converted our dictionary into a string, saved it in the dictionary, saved it in the database, pulled it back out of the database as a string, and then used this json.loads function to reconvert it from a string back to a dictionary. Super easy, one line of code, can't beat that. Love the simple <laughs> solutions. Uh, whenever something is complicated, it's you just kind of use your brain to rethink it, reframe it. We don't need to save it as a dictionary. We can save it as something easier and then just go from there. So then we take our cart, we loop through it, add the thing from the dictionary that was saved in the database to the cart. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube 50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Going over 190,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.